Mel Kuyper Jr., ESPN NFL Draft expert, joining us on the Arizona Sports Line. Mel, thank you for the time. How's it going? Oh, great to be back with you guys. Oh, Mel, really appreciate it, buddy. Oh, that, how you doing, pal? I'm doing great, buddy. Thank you so much. And that pumpkin pie is coming. <laughs> it's coming, Mel. Always. That's why I, I, I really get excited when I see this show on the docket. You know? <laughs> Uh, all right, well, Mel, let's uh, let's start at number four. You have sure. uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. to the <laughs> Cardinals, <laughs> and now I'm just thinking about food. Um, with with Marvin Harrison Jr. in in your mind, is it just because he is the best receiver, or is there more to it in terms of a specific fit with the Cardinals? Well, I think he's the best player. I think right now you could make an argument he's the second best player in this draft. Some would say the best player in this draft. So, you know, when you're picking four, I always say you don't want to get the fifth best player. You want a guy certainly in your top three or four. And I think on anybody's board, unless you want to begin contrarian in some art to say, hey, Romo Dunze and oh, Malik Neighbors is better than Marvin Harrison Jr. And I'm not going to sit here and argue with that because they're really both outstanding receivers as well. I just think Marvin has a slight edge over Odunze and Neighbors. That's the way I rank the top three receivers. But I do think Marvin is proven that he is a elite player. His Obviously, his dad was a Hall of Famer and a great player in his own right, and this kid is exactly like his father. He's business-like. He's bigger. Uh, you know, he, you know, Marvin Harrison ran 4-4. I was with him at the Hula Bowl. Like I said he came to play there. Hey, he was a tremendous player in the NFL, and this kid has a chance to be uh, as good as his dad. And, uh, and certainly for Arizona, that's what they would like to you know, acquire at some point. Why not with the fourth pick overall? You know, for me, Mel, right now, I want to know this. Of all the guys that are likely to be first-round picks, who's the biggest killer of all of them? (laughs) Who's the guy, Mel, that everyone else is afraid of out on the field? Of the guys that might be taken in the first round, who's the biggest killer? It's a great question, Wolf. I think the guy that is that player, that's the mauler, that's getting tremendous momentum, that has that attitude and that approach is J.C. Latham from Alabama. Uh, yeah, for the right tackle. He's got no defensive end wants to play against. He will beat you up. It's a heavyweight fight every time the ball snaps with him. So he is now in pass protection. He'll say, well, you know, yeah, he's got the punch, but he doesn't sit up deep enough. He doesn't have to sit up deep. He, he has that, that <laughs> punch, and he'll knock you off, off right off the bat. So you don't want to deal with this guy. Like I said, he's the guy I think, and I put him to the Chargers in the mock, and people were saying, why did you do it? He's not that highly rated. He's going to drop to 18 to Cincinnati. No, he's not. He's going in the top 10. Uh, if you go back and watch this kid, he just, like I say, people say, well, how about the play against Michigan? Well, that was a hiccup at the end. He played great in that game. So I think of, the, of the, all the guys that you'd say are the, the heavyweight that you don't want to go up against, and you're going to be bruised and battered at the end of each game. It's going to be against uh, a guy like J.C. Latham, the right tackle from That's Alabama. So cool. Talking to Mel Kuyper Jr., Mel, I, I would venture to guess most Cardinals fans want the Cardinals to do what you have them doing and taking Marvin Harrison at four. But if they went in a different direction, is there still a number one receiver, number one caliber receiver beyond those top three of Adunze and Neighbors and, and Marvin Harrison Jr.? Well, at 27, it's going to be interesting. I thought there was a chance Brian Thomas Jr. could be there, the other receiver at LSU. After the way he tested, that's not going to happen. So he's going to go. I have him ranked as the 11th best player. I was hearing from people I talked to, hey, he's going to drop a little further. You got him too high. I don't think too high. I think maybe he gets to the middle of the first. He's not getting to 27. He's not getting into the late first round uh, to the Arizona Cardinals at that spot. The guy that could be is Keon Coleman from Florida State. He ran 4 6 one at the Combine, but he did great in the gauntlet. He had a heck of a year at Florida State. He had a couple drops late. There were concentration drops. Up until then, he had been pretty flawless. Had some huge games. He's a, he's a power forward with his hand-eye coordination, his catch radius, and his athleticism. Uh, he's a guy that, because of the 4 6 40, may drop into the late first. And some think he could drop into the second. So he'll be around at that point. There's a couple other receivers going to be really interesting. A guy like Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. A big receiver, had a great year, tested well. He'll be on the board probably in the late first round. I love Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky, who draws comparisons to Debo Samuel. So, yes, uh, there, there will be an intriguing wide receiver. If they didn't take Harrison or didn't get Harrison, there will be an, uh, plenty of wide receiver options in the late first round or early second round. Yeah, everyone keeps talking about how many options are at wide receiver right now. For me, once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this over on the defensive side of the ball, Mel, and I'm going to ask you, who's the next? nastiest player on the defensive side of the ball that you have seen. I'm talking about a guy who just wants to go a little old school and drive you into the ground. 
You got one for me? Ooh, I would say as far as defensive players that have that kind of attitude, that approach, um, I think I think Edger and Cooper, the off-ball linebacker. Okay. And that was my number one off-ball linebacker. He got after the quarterback this year. He tracks you down. He had a lot of tackles for loss. 17 of those were behind the line of scrimmage. A wolf. So I think he's the kind of guy, athletically, he has what you want to be able to have range and coverage ability, but he also has shown that he can be disruptive and get after the quarterback and wreak havoc when they moved him to the outside linebacker spot. Uh, in passing situations, so I I think he's the kind of guy. I can see always go to those those old inside backers and who's the thumper. He's not that kind of guy, but we don't want that kind of guy in the NFL right now. If you want a guy like that, it'll be probably Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State, kind of a throwback <laughs> to the Chris Spielman days. But you really don't need that. You want an every down player who's got speed, range to the football, and will hit kind of like the old school guys. And that would be I think Edger and Cooper from Texas A and M. So the Baltimore Ravens are going to be all over them, right? I mean, <laughs> this is they're going to draft them. Well, they really right now, well, if I talk to, to Vinny Serrato, who does radio here and covers the Ravens, and they hope that Trenton Simpson can fill in for Patrick Queen, who they figure to lose in free agency really? next to Roquan Smith. So Patrick Queen, don't be shocked if he goes out to Seattle with Mike McDonald. You know, so, you know, then we got you know, the, we had three defensive coaches leave, uh, and the coordinator, one to Seattle and Miami, Tennessee. So they usually go with guys they're familiar with. So Patrick Queen, Trenton Simpson, they drafted last year. Uh, fourth round, they think he played great in that final game. You I think in the regular season game against the Steelers, they think he could be the guy there to fill in for Patrick Queen. But no, I think I think Edron Cooper is one of the top twenty-eight to thirty best players in this draft. He may drop to the second round, and if he does, he becomes a heck of an off-ball linebacker for somebody. Well, I like that. Talking to Mel Kuyper Jr. Mel, the Cardinals obviously have a lot of needs. One of them is corner. I know you have a few in, in your uh, in your first round of your latest mock. Is is there a corner that stands out to you as somebody that could step in right away and, and on on day one and help a team? I'll tell you, I think there's a lot of those guys. I think an underrated guy that I have him in the late first round. Some people kind of scoffed at that, that that's not happening. But he, at worst, he's an early to mid two. Is TJ Tampa from Iowa State? He didn't work out the combine. He had a minor injury, but he had a great year for for Campbell at Iowa State. Uh, he's six two, six one and change. He's got length, long arms. He can. I, I think his coverage ability he showed over the last couple of years has been outstanding. He's got wide receiver hands, so he, when he gets an opportunity to pick off the pass, he will. TJ Tampa from. from from Iowa State's most underrated corner in this draft, I believe, in terms of the guys who are going in the first two rounds. Cooper DeGene, if you, I think he's a corner. So I'm thinking he's a safety. He could drop into the late first round. I have him going 19 to the Rams. If he drops into the late first round with the injury late in the season, he didn't work out the combine, but he's going to be ready for camp. Uh, Cooper DeGene is a guy to keep an eye on in the late first, if he gets down that far. But I think the most underrated corner is TJ Tampa you know, from Iowa State. And the corner is going to be number one on the board, off the board, is either going to be Quinion Mitchell from Toledo or Terry and Arnold from Alabama. One of those two becomes the number one cornerback taken in this draft with probably Nate Wiggins from Clemson after the way he ran, and he had a good year at Clemson. He doesn't have great length in terms of arm length, but he's still a, a guy that really improved as a corner. He'll be a first-rounder, but the two top corners, like I say, are Mitchell from Toledo and then Arnold from Alabama. We're talking to the legendary Mel Kuyper Jr. here on the Wolf and Luke Show on Arizona Sports 98.7. So tell me right now, tell me, Mel, who is the best player in the draft? You said Marvin Harrison Jr. You could argue that he might be the best. Is it Caleb Caleb Williams? I think it is. Well, I, you know, I, I say that not hesitantly. I, I think you know Caleb didn't have the great finish to the season. If he would have, I would have been saying that. Like, why are you even asking me that question? It, it makes you know, he's the guy. But the fact that he had the Notre Dame game and he had a couple games, the Cal game, he wasn't great. There were some some hiccups along the way there. But up until that point last year and up until mid season this year, he looked like he was going to be no question, and he will be probably the number one pick to Chicago. But the fact that he didn't play great late in the year opened up the door to maybe some 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 questions about whether that really should be the case or should they go forward with Justin Fields. That's why that debate started is because the way Cato finished. But to answer your question, he's the number one guy. Is it by miles like it would have been had he played like he did in 2022? No. Is he, uh, if yes, the 32 teams, is he the number one quarterback in this draft? I'd say no, not all 32 would say yes. Some may say Jaden Daniels from LSU. But is he... If, you know, by a wide margin, the consensus number one quarterback. Yes, he is, and like I said, he gets the edge in terms of being the number one player overall for me. Even with the finish late in the year, that wasn't the best he could have been. Mel, you are a legend when it comes to talent evaluation right now. So this next question is very, very important to me right now. Caleb Williams, when he was crying in his mother's arms, how did you process that? 
you know, I didn't. I, I watched him play high school football here at Gonzaga, and I watched him develop in the way he played. And it, so it didn't. Yeah, I know how tough he is, how what kind of kid he is, how you know what he does, and and how he operates. So I think the, some of the criticism coming his way for the nails and the this and the that, and you know he's you know Lincoln Riley had to sit him down when they lost and talk to him there about that. I, I think it's just and the things didn't happen the right late in the year for him. But look at 2022, and I even asked a guy who was kind of a detractor and then it's a little bit negative on him had been in the league is now in the media and i said well what about 20 oh he was sensational he was phenomenal <laughs> well if he was sensational phenomenal in 2022 you're up to the coaching staff and the organization to get him back and maintain that level and he was sensational up until maybe with the middle of the season when that notre dame game happened so to me well i wouldn't worry about that type yeah. of thing some people may i look at it whatever but he, he's a he's a football player and he can be awarded now the fumbles he's got to cut down he had like 33 fumbles during his career so with 16 this past year so he's got to be better with ball security but hey remember they were saying about josh allen when he started his career too and how'd that work out yeah right we're talking mel kuyper jr mel uh, at number four how real of a possibility do you think it is the cardinals would just trade down and try and collect more picks it depends how they feel about marvin harrison if they don't feel that marvin harrison is the is a uh, head and shoulders above every receiver they could move down a little bit and say hey we can still get malik neighbors we can get romo dunze we can get brian thomas jr we can get another we can get a corner like quinian mitchell we can get a corner like terry and arnold you know we get an offensive lineman we if they feel there's a group bunch together they're comfortable with any one of those five six guys then they could move off of four but if they feel hey marvin harrison jr is our number one or number two rated player on the board we need a receiver he's special he can be larry fitzgerald he can be that kind of guy in the NFL, then you got to take him. Mel Kuyper Jr., thank you so much, man. Mel, can I just ask you one more thing, oh, big boy. guy? Can I just ask you one more Anything. thing right here? Um, what do you do when you are not eating pumpkin pie or breaking down players? That's about it. <laughs> that's, 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 I mean, seriously, Mel, what are, what, you, you've got no hobbies or anything? Not really. This time of year, no. This time of year, no. That, that's basically it. it. It's usually the June and July gives you chances, <laughs> uh, the chance to get away. But from August until basically May, that's it. Man, you are awesome, my friend. Thank you so much <laughs> Thanks, for Mel. joining us, Mel. I really well, do appreciate it. Hobbies are for it. retirement, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You never know when that's going to happen. <laughs> hey, Mel, and, and Mel, be looking for that pumpkin pie because you know it's coming. Ah, uh, can't wait. You guys are the best. I appreciate it, man. Okay, Thank buddy. You, Mel. Take care, it. guys. You got it, Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.